Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karishma Dolasha, and I'm your speaker for today. A little background about me. I have been teaching or have been in the educational field for around five years, and my subject is that I teach a history and sociology. And I am very happy to share all my knowledge regarding today's session. Um, just can you share? Ma'am, can you see my screen? Okay. Today, our topic for today is integration in education. Uh, when we talk about integration, integration itself means to uh, include different things. Now, we're going to talk only about education here, but integration itself means to include different things and various things. Uh, when, when we're talking about in, uh, integration in education, we're talking about integration in education in for the students. Now, for example, we're going to be talking about different components that are very important to get them together. So we're talking about different students, could be from different backgrounds, diverse students. All of them, when they come together and if there's a program set up for them, it's going to be an amazing start for people to understand the diversity, to understand uh, how to deal with different things and not feel bad about the same. So when I'm talking about education, it means diverse students, regardless of the background, background in the sense it doesn't matter if they're high caste, low caste, abilities, if they're disabled, if they are uh, unique uh, students, then needs and mainstream classroom and education programs. So uh, when we talk about educational integration, it's very important to know that uh, NEP, which is the new national education policy, uh, they have made sure to integrate education and the educational system in different ways. So maybe we can do a topic next time on NEP and how it's good and how it has uh, implemented a lot of different integrational educational schemes for students and teachers. Now, why do we need to actually learn integration in education? Now, it's very important that we learn integration in education so that we know how to uh, foster a sense of belongingness. It's a very, very important that we foster a uh, sense of belongingness, reduce discrimination. We even do it to promote a more equitable society. So it's very important to understand tolerance, to understand problem solving and creativity. Then we need to understand the emotional skills, the development skills. So when you talk about social and economic skills, you need to understand how to talk to a person with empathy, the way you communicate, how we co uh, resolve conflict if we have some, and not blame it on gender or race or caste. Then we have something called as preparation of the real world. It's very important these days to make sure that we prepare the kids for the real world. Most of my students ask me, Ma'am, why are we studying history? Or oh, why are we studying sociology? Or oh, why are we studying any subject? When I'm going to become an engineer? Or oh, I'm going to become a doctor? And then, you know, I have to literally explain to them that history is only so that you learn out of those mistakes and do not repeat those mistakes that they needed in the history. So uh, to convince them that every subject is important and why is it reliable or why is it so important to learn it at this time it's very important for teachers to do that i see teachers normally just say you have to do it i'm sorry the school is told or maybe it's the educational policy that has been set up so no you need to explain to the student why really we're doing a particular subject because every subject is related to the real world and the present. So it's very, very important to let them know that. Now, when we talk about resources and allocations, um, we believe that when there's integration, of course, you're gonna have a proper uh, education system, which has all different kinds of diverse students, as well as you will know that there's a positive. The positive is that you might save a little on money because you'll not have a separate educational system to deal with uh, if you have an integrated education system. 
then we have something called the T-show pro, uh, professional development. Now, uh, I remember during the COVID time, we had this NISHTA certificate courses, which every teacher had to do, or these small courses on how to teach online, because it was very different. And I would not say difficult, but something new for the teachers. And when something is new, it automatically seems and feels to be difficult which of course it didn't towards the end because we were being trained so teachers professional development is very important the teachers have to be updated with each and everything that's going on right now chat gpt ai there's so many things that teachers need to know because our students are already using it way before we even heard the terms so it's very important that you know it let's go to the next different integrations now uh this is something very very interesting and you should know as teachers or even students should know about it uh technological integration we did most of the technological integration uh, during the COVID time. And um, recently, I've been using a little of AI with my students in uh, school, and they've been very excited that I know something that they know as well. Uh, in the starting, they were like, ma'am, do you know about it? But I made sure to research way before they could even come up to me. So they used it for their projects, and you know, I had to tell them you cannot. So there is a plus and a minus on both AI and ChatGPT as well. So that's what I told them that when we talk about cur uh, curriculum integration, it's very important to integrate curriculums. Now, this is a very important point in NEP as well, wherein, for example, if you are an, uh, a humanity student, like you've taken arts, you've taken sociology, psychology, English, economics, you being an art student can opt for a science subject or a commerce subject. That's called current curriculum integration. Because for example, if a science student wants to become a psychologist, uh, they can do take psychology from the arts. They want to even do a little of commerce because they want to know how it uh, how it functions. So they can take commerce, they can take psychology and take all the science other subjects. So that's the integration and in curriculums that we're looking at. Inclusive practices. It's very important to have inclusive practices. Make sure that you include everything. Uh, in inclusive practices, you can talk about, um, you know, different ways of uh, studying. It could be with project base, it could be with just what we're doing right now. We're doing a nice workshop or something like that. Real world connections, I think I've already uh, explained this, uh, but I'll just speak one line on it. That's very important to relate everything you do in real life. Uh, for example, when you're teaching something, make sure you connect it to what you did recently. Like get your students to be a part of it more than you just speaking and letting go of it. Students will remember it for life. Teacher collaboration. Now recently uh, I had a topic in my sociology class it was related to media and I have a mass media communication uh, teacher with me in school. So we planned to collaborate a class and I got his mass media kids with me even though was, they were from a different grade they could understand because even they had a topic related to sociology. So the best part is I made sure to integrate it. We did planned it a month prior, made sure we come, we are on the same track and then we planned a complete class together and it was very exciting. Students loved it. They felt it was so different that a class would never merged. Plus uh, and a master's in MMC has been there. So she, he could easily given all the inputs and I could relate it to sociology and we would connect our dots very well. Then we had, uh, okay, the next one we have uh, student-centered learning. Uh, when we talk about student-centered learning, project-based learnings are student-centered. Um, uh, group discussions are uh, student-centered learning. So anything that you would want students to learn, for example, just have a small, you know, small feedback test. Uh, I could give an example that um, in one of my classes, Shorji classes, my kids, uh, towards the end, I wanted to know if they've learned everything I've taught. But they were so tired. They're like, Miss, we don't want to do anything. And one of my kids was humming a song. You know, just it just came up. So I was like, wow, this is a great idea. I told my one of my kids, who's a very good writer, she writes songs, poems. Um, she wrote with the help of the entire class, she wrote a feedback song and there was a girl who used to rap. Now, she rapped the entire um, topic that I taught and it was a blast in the class. 
everyone outside my uh, outside the class was like why are they saying game wow it's so cool but towards the end all my students tell me till now that they remember the rap and because of that they remember the answer and it was amazing it was a beautiful feeling i wish i could capture the moment but i was so clued and into it i totally forgot that you know i should capture it and you know keep it with myself for life but it is there with me so that's what i'm talking about so true and centered make sure you uh what do you say make sure you cater to the needs of the student they didn't even realize they gave me an entire uh, conclusion to my entire class which is amazing okay let's go to the next challenges there are many challenges that we face limited resources now when you talk about really limited resources maybe you might have glitches in when you're doing online classes you have glitches in your uh, network or something like that so it's very important that we make sure to get our resources done technical gaps we've already spoken about it diversity in learning styles now uh we have a lot of programs called as you mind i don't know if you know that it's about uh your rob needs india and i have culture tradition food lifestyle they have and our kids are super excited so diversity in learning styles they even learn the way they learn like in netherlands the way kill chill cool they just uh, have a five minute homework but here when you give homework we make sure we give good amount of homework and plus for every subject there is just five minutes of homework per day and they're good so it's very different and they come they share their views their thoughts we try to make a little of balance make them understand what's good and what's bad etc standardized testing but uh pressure now when we talk about testing uh again i'm talking about nep because testing skills have improved in NEP. If we follow NEP uh, 2020, uh, I think uh, we're going to be, I, we're going to literally develop in the education field and the system, which is amazing. So uh, when we're talking about it, it's very important that you know that uh, testing skills have changed. Now we're going to go on to different kind of testing questions, more than just asking a direct recall question. What is for example, what is sociology? No, rather we're going to put in an example of sociology and tell you what do you think this is? Is it sociology, psychology, is it philosophy, is it history? Something like that. And I think that's going to trigger those minds and you know open up the minds of the students. So it's very important. Next, teacher burnout. Now what happens is teachers are literally getting tired. They're getting so much. They have to keep themselves updated every time. Normally, students get to know a lot more earlier about technology and they use it faster than us. Qualities in education, uh, inequalities, when we talk about inequalities in education, could be inequalities in terms of gender, race, caste. Even though we have these certain policies, which are challenges, which are already there, but it's a challenge to put it forth in action. We need to try the education system. It's not possible. But if you start it, you could be the start and the source to spread it out. It's very important. Solutions. Management, wherein you know what to use, what not to use. These days, when you go to school, it's very, very important that you know uh, what before your lesson. It's not something that you do it right away. Okay, then we have digital inclusion initiatives wherein we have different places where we structure strategies. When we're talking about this, we're talking about uh, teacher training, teachers, different instructions to better address diverse learning styles so that you meet the needs of the students. Holistic uh, assessment practices. Uh, here it's more about again and teach them in general, which is actually very difficult for a teacher, but I think she should try and make an attempt to do so. So, yeah. Teacher support and professional development. Now, uh, I've already given you um, a very good example of have a cute little session uh, from the council and uh, subject wise we discuss what is the difference how it's going to be what are we going to do support professionals normally are being given either by the school or they're being given by the council the, or whichever board you're teaching but if you do not have something like that very important that you try and do something update yourself in short uh 
equity forced policies when you talk about policies again NEP I'm so sorry but I'm talking a lot of amazing when you read the policies they're just too good and that's how you need to be okay but I hope we come up soon with NEP and every school just follows that because it's an amazing funds community outreaches programs and support to underprivileged students as well this is more related to again NEP. so next one is community engagement just maybe go to an old age home entertain them do not feel um, you know, different from them because they're just same. They just don't have a few things. That's it. And that's what we're trying to teach them here and I, and all of that. And you need to have a proof that you're getting your children to do something like that earlier. There was no proof as such required, but now it is really important. You at least can prove that the kid was present there and has done certain things. Um, Last but not at least, I'm addressing the challenges in educational files. Um, I might learn um, with the help of reading. Somebody might learn how to, with the help of seeing a video, etc. So it's very important. Uh, involved, edu involved, create an inclusive and equitable learning environment. It's very important to have an equal environment whatsoever. There could be that everyone knows, but then, you know, it does... Because people know he's aesthetic, people treat him a, diff a little differently, which I have been trying to put very important. Thank you very much. It was an amazing session. Uh, Ma'am, up to you. Little unstable connection. I don't know whether it's from your end or my end. Okay. Um, it is uh, saying uh, that live streaming um, questions. I will okay. read those questions to you and you can answer and we will see uh, how it goes. Sure, okay. sure. Now, so uh, the first question is, what are the... Only when you integrate your students get to know a lot of different aspects to it. For example, uh, when you talk about integration, I gave you an example already of integrating music with my uh, class. So I was taking a sociology class and uh, that's why my kids were not wanting to continue because it was the last lecture. I, but they listen. I told them, just give me 20 minutes. They heard me and they're like, ma'am, we have 10 minutes. And let's just rest. And I was like, no, I need to at least know if they've learned it or no, or if they've understood. And I never let go of things. So I just wanted to make it enjoying and someone was just humming a song. And I told them, you know, you need to... Uh, Let's let's sing a song, all of you, you know, but it has to be related to sociology. It has to be related to what we did right now in class. And they were super excited. I integrated music uh, and sociology and it came together as a beautiful piece. Now, it could be in different ways of integration as well. When you're integrating, for example, I am going outside and I am teaching my kids live. Uh, if I'm talking about society, I'm talking about a group and I take them to a garden, tell them, come on, I want you to interpret what the group is thinking, how it does it, are they friends, are they not, etc. It's integration. I'm integrating real life, some reality right there in front of them, teaching them what it looks like. So integration is not, it could be with subjects. It could be with integration with the uh, curriculum, wherein you're integrating two curriculums. We've already spoken about how an art student can take commerce or science background subjects as well and integrate it to make sure that they reach that goal of where what they want to study. Okay. Um, did you stop sharing the screen, Matt? Can you close? Yes. Screen? Yes, I did. I did. I okay. stopped sharing the screen. No Do you want me to share it? No, no, no need. No need. Okay. No, not able to see it here. No issues. Okay. So are there any potential challenges or drawbacks to integration in education? You have already spoken about multiple challenges. If you want yes. to mention anything else. Uh, anything specific? I would say the major challenges that you would face in integration learning is even the organizations that we work in. Now, every organization might say that they are having integration, edu integrated education. They are uh, making sure students learn or they put down all the aspects that integration learning actually deals with. But not necessarily every organization would uh, follow it. So as a teacher, as an individual, it does get difficult and challenging. 
and if created education in your system it gets changing in future like i said because they have they have to make sure the student centric because every student doesn't learn the same way so there are multiple challenges and it all depends on the situation like in india right now it is very difficult because um teachers are yet learning for example for nep the integration learning we teachers ourselves are getting trained to how to put put forth questions how to teach in this form and this format and it is different so i would not say difficult but it is different and we are learning and it's a challenge in, in itself so maybe after 5 6 years every teacher might be a pro in integration learning that's what we are planning and that's what nep plans to do yes ma'am hello yes ma'am i'm done yeah yeah yes so the third question is ma'am um can you share any research or evidence supporting the effectiveness of integrated education a uh, research uh maybe not right now yeah. i won't be able to share it right away mm -hmm. for integrated ed education but uh, we have something called as you mind which we do okay and i've been doing it and i have my students who are a part of you mind where integration learning is i think i can speak right for what i have seen so maybe they can go on the site of you mind uh -huh. e u m i n d you mind and check it out because most of the schools are doing it uh -huh. and it's very interesting okay okay so what role does technology play in facilitating integration in education ma'am technology right now earlier of course technology was never used but after covid uh, i think technology has played a major role where in uh, i know we have a smart board in school where uh, we can literally teach science where in we can show you a beaker and the beaker is pouring some liquid and its mixture and all of that it feels very live for example we even have uh, something called as a video script ai we have we have these uh, if you go to these amazon and nike places you know if you want to know how a particular lipstick or a blush or whatever makeup looks on your face you just have to take your picture and you know just rotate around so that they know you, how you look and then they'll take that picture and on that picture they will put in all your makeup so that's the kind of technology that's going on right now and my students actually learned this and they were like why not we inculcate it in education now i have a few students who are trying to build up something similar for uh what do you say um uh, school where they want you know all the kids to have a photo and then they want to look how their dressing sense looks like so they are coming up with a new project in my school where in uh kids are going to actually take their picture and put on different clothes and how it would look on them so that's something very interesting so that's the importance of technology not only in education but all around everywhere so though this is a part of education that i spoke about technology is important like there's no yes technology uh, plays an important role in every aspect of life now <laughs> yes very true right yeah. now we will yeah. not be able to connect if we didn't have technology so. absolutely so how do educators ensure that integration doesn't dilute the depth of learning in individual subjects very difficult for a teacher but yes it is possible uh now if you go per subject integration not net, uh, when we talk integration it doesn't mean that you have to teach in a specific way now that's what schools believe but we should not do that we should make sure that we do not uh, overdo as well there are many teachers who directly on the name of integration uh, they would just show a video and finish the topic which is also not integration because in the end there's no speaking there's no share of information from the teacher so it's very important that every topic in your subject i would not say every subject every topic has a different you have a different way of teaching it and you cannot stick to one teaching way that's where you try to start diluting it so how does integration in education address the diverse learning needs of students students are of different uh, 
uh, or with different capabilities. Some Correct. are learners, some are like gifted. So how Correct. does this integration help in education uh, in addressing these diverse learning needs? Ma okay. Firstly, uh, it is very important when you talk about integration that we talk about, of course, diverse kids and they get certain concessions. Like I have my dyslexic kid where we have certain concessions given where we make sure that we give them 10 minutes extra. So we get a list from the council, okay, for learning as well. So if you're talking about in class, it's different wherein we make sure if you're giving a project, we give the kid two, three days extra uh, to, you know, complete the project. We make sure the kid do, does it on his own. But in case there is a kid who cannot write, then of course we have a substitute who writes for the kid. So it's not that we do not help the kid to finish everything on time or just before the timeline is over. We make sure that the kids feel safe. We give them concessions. We give them writers if needed. We make sure to give them extra lectures. So we have something for these extra lectures for those kids in case they don't understand. They do come for those extra lectures even in school. And we explain to them depending on their abilities, what they, how would they understand. Uh, so there's one kid of mine who loves seeing videos. He just would see videos all the time. And he's, he is a slow learner. But when you show him videos, he will tell you the entire video as a story. Realizing that he doesn't like seeing a teacher standing and talking. That's the way he is. So I make my own videos and show it to him. Now, we, I would not every time want to show a video from the net. Not necessary. Every video is appropriate. So then in the end, I make a video on my own and I show it to that kid. That kid doesn't realize it's me only who's talking. But he loves seeing it on the video. He's got this thing. So that's how I taught him. So I'm being very personal. I'm teaching him. Uh, the way he wants to be taught and he learns better. So that's how we go about it. You spoke about the professional development of the teacher. Why is it important? So what is the impact of integration on teacher training and professional development? Okay, uh, so the impact of teacher training is very nowadays there are many courses which have come up for teachers which are connecting them to AI and chat GPT and how to use it for their benefit. And I think teachers need to go ahead and take these certificate courses or not certificate, but courses wherein they will learn a lot from it. And of course, because of these certificate courses, integrated learning is booming and teachers are learning and becoming much better. So I think certificate courses are very important for the same of them. Okay. So... How does integration foster critical thinking, problem solving, and creativity in students? Uh, okay, for critical thinking, I think uh, when you, uh, I would talk about NEP, wherein NEP is actually focusing on critical thinking, problem solving. Um, they have made sure to have questions or they, they're prompting teachers to teach in a way that students start thinking right in class. For example, uh, when you talk about Jyotiba Fule, we know that he's someone who started with ed uh, education and his wife started with women education. Um, so instead of asking what reforms did he, uh, what do you say, come across, the different way of asking the question that we do so that children would think about it is what if Jyotiba Pule was alive today? What are the different reforms that he would uh, have? So they would talk about education, maybe free education for children, maybe having, you know, something related to education, new policies that he must have built up. So we're trying to make them think in a different way, more than just thinking, who is he? What did he do? When did he do? So we've been told years are important to know, but not to remember. It's more about knowing what they have done and how it could benefit us today. What if it was today? What if it had not been that time? What would be the co uh, consequences? These are the problem-solving questions that we started asking as teachers uh, in NEP when we were trained. So I was being trained by uh, for NEP as well. And it was amazing because we as teachers felt it was different to even ask a question like that. We never ask questions like that. We've always asked recall questions. 
who is this? What is this? Why they've done it? That's it. Instead of asking it in a different way. We've been even taught how to ask with examples. Wherein if you give a situation and identify what that situation means. That means if the kid has identified it, the kid understands the topic, the situation, the idea behind it, etc. Okay. Ma'am, uh, because of the time constraint, I will go uh, to the last question. Okay. What recommendations do you have for educators and policy makers looking to promote integration in their schools or institutions? Okay, when you talk about institutions, when you talk about integrated learning, I think institutions need to be free for, for letting, you know, teachers explore the way to teach. Like we have a garden. Uh, I want, like... I once went to one of my institutes and told them I want to teach in a garden. And they're like, yeah, sure, take your kids in the garden. Though my topic was not related to any plants or nature. But just by sitting there and I was speaking, my kids were so happy. They were interested. Why are you taking us to the garden? What are we going to do? Are we going to just sit? Are we going to read? Are we going to, you know, do something? So I just gave them some topic to discuss and they came up with acting. And so it's very important that you make sure that Policy, uh, you know, institutions support teachers when they want to do integrated learning. Uh, policy making, I would say, uh, every institute should not be so rigid that if the policy is that the teacher is supposed to teach in a certain way, like we have lesson plans as a teacher. Most of the institutions are very glued to this is what you should say, this is what you should do, this is what your set induction should be, this is what it should be. But there are times when, you know, for example, while I was coming to class, I saw something and it is related to my topic. I speak it out. I give that example instead of the set in action that was planned earlier because it's interesting, it's real, it's a real life experience, it's a present situation. Then even making sure your kids try and give you examples related to the same of their lives. That's how they connect. That's how people say, yes, even I had the same thing. And the class gets interesting. So I think sometimes it's very important for the institution to let teachers teach freely more than just what has been told. And this is how you're supposed to do. And uh, policy makers, I would say that I don't want to talk a lot about policy making because I feel they've already done a very good job in NEP, though I'm still in the process of learning NEP. I'm not completely.